One of the most annoying things about the Mac to me is that the dock and menu bar take up a lot of vertical space when you add them all together. And I see a lot of people using Macs that have the menu bar up all the time and it's just taking up so much space that they could be using to look at web pages or work on a video project. So one thing you could easily do is make the dock smaller. And I like to do this even though I actually hide it because then the distance that my mouse has to travel to click on things is a little bit less. But I like to make it so a slightly smaller size, but I still like to be able to see it. Then I click this box here, automatically hide and show the dock. So then what happens is the dock is not usually showing, but you can just move your mouse to the bottom of the screen and it will show up. So I find that this is easy enough and look how much extra screen real estate you have versus having that huge default dock. There is also an option to automatically hide and show the menu bar and it would be the same thing where you would move the mouse to the top of the screen. This might be great for more intensive work. Personally, I don't like to do this though because on Mac, it tells you the name of the application that you're in right now on the left side. And I also just like having the time at a glance. So I personally hide the dock, but I leave the menu bar showing. Another thing that people don't seem to know how to do by default is to customize the dock so that the apps that they want on the dock are showing. And um, it's surprising because there are a bunch of apps that probably people don't use that we could easily get rid of. So what I like to do is go into the dock and remove any of these apps that I'm not using. So for example, I personally don't use the launch pad. So I can control click on, on this. So hold down control and then click on it. And then I can click remove from dock and it will disappear. So you would do that for any of the apps that you don't find that you use. So for example, for me, that's mail, options, remove from dock. Maps, options, remove from dock. Now these aren't deleted from your computer, they're still accessible and you can actually just access them by searching for them. They're just not gonna be in your dock. So I only put like the apps that I use all the time there and then everything else I search for. it. Now if an app is open, which you would be able to tell with this little dot below the apps icon, um, instead of showing remove from dock, it will actually have the option keep from dock and you'll be able to check or uncheck it. So this app is open, but I don't want it in the dock. So I'm going to uncheck that. And now there are apps that I do want to keep in the dock. So this middle section here will actually dynamically change based on the most recent apps that I've used. But for example, I'd like to keep Spotify in the dock. So I'm going to control click on that and then click keep in dock. And then you see it moves over to this left side here and then I can drag it to position it exactly where I want it to be. So that's my much more pared down dock. And as you can see, it's a lot more organized for my own taste. And of course, if there's an app that I would use sometimes, like for example, podcasts, I can just search for that in Spotlight by holding down command and hitting the space bar, then searching for it and pressing enter. So that's a more productive way to navigate around the Mac. Now by default, in the bottom right of the dock, the Mac includes the downloads folder and the trash can. And I actually like to add two more folders to this for maximum productivity. And the first one is the applications folder. So instead of using mission control, which is big, and it looks like it's more optimized for a tablet, the applications folder is very compact and it's easy to access all the applications. So the way you do that is you click the finder and then over here on the left side, you have the applications folder and you're going to just drag that down to the bottom here like that. By default, it'll have this grid view, which I think is fine, but personally, I actually like a different view. So I'm gonna right click that folder, which would be control click on your laptop and I will change that to a list view. And now you can see instead of that grid, it actually just shows a very nice compact alphabetical list here. So I think that that is a more efficient way to navigate the applications folder in specific. The other thing I like to do is create a screenshots folder. Now by default, when you create screenshots on the Mac, they all save to the desktop. And this tends to get quite messy. And if you have a lot of screenshots, it can actually be hard to find the screenshot that you're looking for. So I actually like to do something different, which is to create a screenshots folder that shows up down in the dock that I can instantly find all the screenshots that I've taken more recently. So the first thing we'll want to do is create a screenshots folder. And one place you might want to do it is in your documents folder. So you go to finder and then go to the documents section and then we'll create a new folder from here. So we will go right click and then new folder, screenshots, 
and we probably want to use the uh, columns view here and then the screenshots folder will do there. I actually put mine in Google Drive, but it doesn't really matter where you save yours. Then what you'll do is you take your screenshots folder and you will drag it down to the dock here. And then you have to set the location of the screenshots folder to save in that folder. So to do that, we'll access the screenshot workflow at Command Shift 5, and then we'll click Options, Other Location, and we'll drag our screenshots workflow folder into here and click choose. And then now any screenshot will save into the folder that we selected instead of to the desktop. So now when you go to create a screenshot, so I'm going to do the command shift for screenshot option spacebar return. It will show the screenshot in an editable workflow here. And then once that disappears, it will automatically appear down in the folder that we just created. So I find that this is a much more useful way to save your screenshots. Hey, that was a short clip from a larger YouTube video I published about maximizing productivity on your Mac computer. If you're interested in that, definitely click through to my main YouTube channel. Thanks so much.